Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to uh, today's video. We're going to be having a look at the weather towards the middle and last stage of January today because uh, it seems like we're firming up a little bit on uh, the chance of some colder weather coming up uh, from around the middle last stage of the month, certainly in terms of the GFS, but this is a very, very long time away. So uh, it could just be a case that the uh, GFS is seeing this stratospheric warming that's going on uh, around the North Pole and around Greenland at the moment. We have got a bit of a warming uh, take place. I don't think it quite reaches the threshold of a sudden stratospheric warming, but we have got quite a significant warming going on. Uh, we can expect the models to uh, respond to that, and they'll probably do it by uh, trying to increase blocking uh, at the northern latitudes. Um, but, of course... It, we're talking about a couple of weeks away in terms of this blocking filtering down into uh, the lower uh, layers of the atmosphere. And uh, exactly where that blocking sets up, it's probably too far away uh, for the models to be able to sit. So they'll be playing around uh, with uh, solutions and, and scenarios. We can probably expect uh, model reliability to plunge a little bit over the next week or two with this stratospheric warming taking place. There could be a lot of chopping and changing um, and a lot of confusion uh, as we go up towards the middle and uh, that stages of January. But uh, certainly for GFS is uh, going for uh, this colder uh, weather or the chance of some colder weather anyway in the second half but it's uh, its cousin it's long range cousin the CFS the couple forecast system has sort of come on board uh, as well a little bit so I'll show you all the charts in a moment before I get on with that though just to say about the ads there's links to articles on most of the pages at gasoffice.com have a browser of widgets if there's anything that you're interested in please do uh, click through there's also green keyword ads on some pages so if you write us over green keywords basically ads you click through word go to advertise website help support gasoffice.com by doing that and also there's yellow uh, contextual weather related ads on those pages as well so see what those are about and thanks so much for doing that all of this is helping to pay uh, for the website just want to start off uh, with the uh, central england temperature for 2014 the full numbers are in and we have as expected come out uh, with a warmer uh, than average year of course and the warmest year on record the uh, central temperature for uh, December was 5.2 just here um, not all that warm particularly it's actually colder than any uh, winter month last winter um, so cooler month but uh, still a little bit above average but uh, the overall yearly temperature for 2014 uh, is just here coming out at 10.93 that is the warmest uh, yearly century temperature on record and these records go back to 1659 the previous warmest uh, is this year just here 2006 that came out with a central England temperature of 10.87 so not a great deal in it uh, between 2006 and uh, 2014 but uh, yeah we've just beaten 2006 and had the warmest year in the entire central England temperature record although I have to say I think what happened in 2006 is probably more impressive because actually uh, what's happened this year is that virtually all of the months here uh, come out warmer than average none of them record breaking haven't had any record breaking uh, months uh, this year in 2014 although September got uh, fairly close in terms of dryness but it won't be record breaking in terms of the temperature but every month this year comes out uh, warmer than average except August um, so that's how we've achieved it this year with every month being solidly above average what happened in 2006 though is a bit different because we actually had quite a cold start to the year in 2006 um, and it wasn't really until we got through to May that we started to get the warmer than average temperatures in that year so it's from May through June and then into July uh, when we had a record breakingly hot month July 2006 August again was a little bit cooler September another record breaking uh, hot month and then very warm through October November and December so there were far fewer uh, warmer than average months in 2006 um, but the months that were warm 
were incredibly warm, including two record breakers in July and September. So I reckon what happened in 2006 is probably a little bit more impressive than what happened a uh, bit in 2014, uh, really, because, uh, as I say, 2006 has far fewer uh, warmer than average months, and yet still we managed to achieve, uh, up to that point anyway, the warmest year on record. But we've beaten it in 2014 anyway, and uh, now we're left wondering what uh, 2015 holds in store, and things could be turning a little bit cold. And let's start off with the shorter time frame, uh, though. This is the GFS chart for uh, Thursday. We could look at a couple of storms coming in. This is the latest run of the six, uh, of the six o'clock run of the GFS model. Um, Keep an eye on this area of low pressure in the central part of the Atlantic on the Thursday. That deepens like mad as we move through into Friday. This is 6 o'clock in the morning on Friday. And a very, very nasty storm there to the north of Scotland. Really tightly packed ice bars. So severe gales battering Scotland there. You could be looking at gusts of wind up to 80, 90 miles an hour with that. Elsewhere it is windy, but it's really in the north that you're getting a proper old battering. And then there's another area of low pressure in the central part of the Atlantic. And that takes a very similar course as we run through Friday into Saturday. There it comes uh, at midnight on Saturday, a very deep uh, storm to the northwest of Scotland. And that gives northern parts of Scotland in particular another battering as we go through into Saturday morning again. You could get just a wind with that up to uh, 70, 80, 90 miles an hour for parts of central and northern Scotland. It is windy elsewhere but the worst of winds definitely uh, there for northern parts of the country. Of course we've got these perkins. I've explained this in other videos when you get these purple colours turning up in the northern part of the Atlantic it indicates very cold air coming out of the bulb and uh creating cyclogenesis across the Atlantic Ocean and that uh, is normally a signal that uh, something's going to happen in terms of the wind storms. Uh, so you can expect these sort of storms to be coming through when you see these purple because it's not really a surprise but uh, yeah things could get pretty nasty across the northern parts of Scotland as we go through into the end of the week in case of batting down the hatches up there. Now, also going to be bringing in temporarily, anyway, some very warm air. This is unusual to see such warmth so far north into the Atlantic. Um at this time of the year, we've got the 10 Celsius ice firm here uh, in the central part of the Atlantic. It's uh, playing around uh, with this very cold air just to the north. It's a very steep temperature gradient, and that's what's fueling uh, the potential for these winds to be coming uh, through at the end of the week. Very, very tight temperature gradients uh, there, fueling the areas of low pressure. As we go through into Friday, we find that warmth pushing in uh, across the country, those warm upper air temperatures, and uh, temporarily overnight Friday into Saturday gets very, very mild down in the south. You could be looking at uh, minimum temperatures on Friday night in Saturday morning of just 10, 11, 12 degrees, about 7 or 8 degrees above the daytime maximums at this time of year. But it doesn't last very long as that storm moves to the north of Scotland. It brings colder air back down. So by the end of Saturday, uh, we're back into a colder air mass there and of course it's these air masses that fuel uh, that fuel the winds um, the temperature differential between the cold air and the warm air when you get such tight gradients that's what fuels uh, the uh, potential anyway uh, for very very strong winds across uh, parts of the country now I had an update from the uh, CFS overnight this is the latest uh, weekly these are the wait, latest weekly uh, anomalies from the uh, long range CFS uh, model. These are 500 millibar heights. They're broken down into week periods. So the first weekly period takes us from the week that we, that's coming up, the 3rd to the uh, 9th of January. The red colours here are, are extrapolating to uh, above average heights, high pressure. The blue colours and green colours extrapolating to below average heights. That's low pressure. So for the coming week, we've got this area of above average heights to the southwest of the country, the trot to the north. It's transitional because this high pressure is gradually being forced uh, southwards the jet stream is doing something like that. So these stormy systems are pushing this area of above average heights uh, southwards through the coming week. 
as we go through to the next weekly period, this takes us from the 10th to the 16th, um, it's becoming quite interesting because what's happening is that the below, the below the charts are sinking southwards uh, down across the country. So we've got these blue colours setting up more or less over the UK. The ridge is going down uh, to the southwest. Notice all of this uh, red appearing over the top of the pole. That's indicative of high pressure appearing over the top of the North Pole. High latitude blocking. That's what's forcing this trough down. And we're starting to entrench colder air from the north uh, into this trough of low pressure. It's not a desperately cold pattern at this point, but certainly this blocking is beginning to push colder air uh, from the uh, northern latitudes into the mid latitudes through uh, this trough through that week period up to the middle of the month. Now, as we go into the second half of the month, uh, we find the trough is uh, sitting more or less to the uh, west of the country um, and now we really are bringing some colder air uh, into this trough so the main trough is sitting uh, just to the west of Ireland but the winds are probably starting to turn uh, northerly maybe even northeasterly into this trough of low pressure as all of this blocking uh, starts to push down in towards green so this is uh, a period from the 17th to 23rd of January the third week period that we're seeing colder air pushing into that uh, trough of uh, low pressure could be turning significantly colder uh, across the country and as we go through into the final weekly period this takes us from the 24th to the 30th of January we're into a proper cold pattern here um, this would be uh, really really uh, cold actually we've got the trough of low pressure still over top of the country but look how the above average heights are really set up over green and with this, I think winds are going easterly. Uh, if anything, we could be putting in some very cold easterly winds into this trough um, with cold air coming out of the pole uh, like that. Um, that is a significantly cold second half to January showing up on this update from the CFS V2 model. Uh, it could be going a bit over the top. As I say, we've got the stratospheric warming. It could be going too far with uh, the implications of it. But this is just about uh, the coldest sort of scenario that the CFS has churned out, I think, uh, this winter so far. Um, that's proper blocking being signalled there over the pole and around Greenland. That's proper blocking pushing the cold air into uh the mid latitudes uh we would be in for it if that came off these are the uh, temperature anomalies that correspond with those 500 millibar heights the first temperature anomaly takes us from the third to the night so for the first weekly period and we're in the red colors we're uh, just there in the far right hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it we're just over there we're in those red colors um for that first week period so it's above average it's warmer than average through uh, the third to the ninth of january we go through to the 10th to the 16th this is remember is when we're transitioning uh with that trough sinking down uh 10th to the 16th the temperature anomalies are still a little bit above average they're not as high but they are still a little bit milder than average up to the middle of the month but we get through to the second half of the month and there we are the green colors are appearing there uh, across the country so temperatures are going below average uh from uh, the 17th to 23rd of january as that blocking begins to intensify around greenland pulling colder air into the trough temperature anomalies are going around a degree uh, below average maybe a little bit more even uh, for parts of Scotland and then we go through to the final weekly temperature anomaly from the 24th to the 30th of January and we're all in the green colours then so again temperature anomalies around a degree degree and a half uh, below average on that it's not severely cold uh, on that particular chart but certainly it's much much colder than anything we've been used to so far this winter and at any point for last winter uh, as well so it's a little bit alarming what the CFS is seeing this morning but uh, it could be that it's just going over the top with uh, the stratospheric warming and it's producing too much blocking and it's probably placing in just the right position to tap it for us to tap into cold and of course once we actually get this stratospheric warming feeding through the system it may not set up in that position the uh, gfs uh, is also seeing this so this is got run of the gfs it starts off on monday the 12th we've got all these purple colors up here uh, around green and to the north of us on the 12th so still in the same pattern uh, that we're going to be in through the coming week but notice as we get through to uh, day 10 wednesday the 14th the purple colors are going uh, from green and so the heights are coming up um 
and as we move out beyond that, uh, we start to see blocking beginning to develop through the central Atlantic. There it is, trying to push up towards green as this trough gets pushed uh, southwards and eastwards down across the UK and into Europe. Notice heights are lowering through uh, the Mediterranean, through central parts of Europe. So we start to get into a proper block pattern as we go through into the second half of the month on the 6 o'clock operational GFS. A nice rich air through the Atlantic. The troughs are being pushed southwards and eastwards, feeding cold northerly winds into those troughs. Really, that is a good representation of what you're looking at from the CFS V2. And we end up by Saturday the 18th in a really block pattern. Lots of blocking there uh, around Greenland going towards Scandinavia. Pulling winds into the northeast with these troughs of low pressure having cold air embedded within them, no doubt producing the risk of snow for parts of the country. So significantly colder on the 6 o'clock run of the GFS. Um, the parallel 6 o'clock GFS is also seeing this. So uh, here we are on uh, the 15th of uh, January. I have to emphasize these charts are all a very long time away. Uh, so it's so uh, uncertain this. But uh, just a snapshot of what the uh, GFS is showing right now. Uh, I'm giving you a, a snapshot of what it's showing right now. So we get through to Thursday the 15th and uh, we're starting to get into a slightly colder pattern. We run through to Friday the 16th. We've got the ridge building through the Atlantic as the trough is being pushed southwards and eastwards across the country. Cold air coming out of the bowl uh, into that trough of low pressure. We move through into uh, Saturday the 17th. Our trough is right over the top of the country with the ridging through the Atlantic going up towards Greenland cold air being pulled into that trough get through to Sunday the 18th and the trough is sinking southwards into Europe pulling the winds into the east as we get all of this blocking setting up uh, to the north of Scotland between uh, Greenland and Scandinavia through Iceland and we end up uh, by Tuesday the 20th in a proper cold pattern with a risk of snow uh, coming in on those easterly winds the uh, ECMWF and the GM are not seeing this but they only go out to uh, 10 days so this is a 10 day chart from the ECMWF Wednesday the 14th of January and we're still in that fairly mild westerly flow we're Losing the purple colours over Greenland though, so it is seeing that that the uh, very coldest of the air running over Greenland into the North Atlantic is starting to lessen off. The heights are beginning to come up uh, a little bit uh, over Greenland. So it is seeing that, but it doesn't go far enough uh, into that second half of the month just yet. The G, um, well, not really seeing anything. We're still in that strong westerly flow on day 10, Wednesday the 14th of January. So uh, we've got the CFS and the GFS uh, products sort of going for this change in the second half of the month to colder conditions. As I say, we've got the stratospheric warming going on and it could well be that these models are going over the top with the implications of the stratospheric warming. It could well be that once the warming has occurred and it's filtered down into the troposphere, the uh, effects are not as dramatic as this uh, is showing this morning and it could also be that it's not in our not quite in our quadrant of the northern hemisphere these charts from both cfs and the gfs are setting up just perfectly to allow us to tap into that cold air and the blocking may not set up quite like that so it's just really a heads up that something's happening uh, i think with uh, the gfs and the cfs in particular uh, there is something going on there probably related to the stratospheric warming but uh, it's still a little bit too uh, early really to uh, uh, get too excited about this it's just just heads up that something's going on we're going to keep updated through the coming week um, so keep checking back it's a very interesting time frame i think as we go through uh, into uh, the second half of uh, january be very interested to see what happens but uh, yeah it's all looking quite interesting but in the shorter term um, shorter time frame uh, it's wind that we've got to watch out for at the end of this week Friday Saturday uh, could be a couple of really quite intense storms battering northern parts of the country so watch out for that that's it for now thanks for watching